my partners are either successful or dead. Either way, I don't need to take up any more of your time. Someday, one of us is going to kill the other. You know that, don't you? I felt it since the first time I faced you. Like it's in the air and we're just waiting for the right day. Today on the Comic Book Report, The Secret Six by Gail Simone Omnibus, Volume 1. Stick around and check it out. Greetings everyone, my name is Dominic and today you're tuning in to the Comic Book Report where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. And today I'm so excited to be talking about a newly released DC Omnibus. That's right, we're delving into the world of Gail Simone's incredible Secret Six. I first became familiarized with this team during a mini-series that took place during the Infinite Crisis event, and I was elated to have an opportunity to pick this one up to continue the adventures. I have a lot of thoughts about this book, but before we jump in, I do want to shout out the channel sponsor, OrganicPriceBooks.com. If you're looking to pick up your own comic book collected editions, I highly encourage you to check out their website. You can actually find a link for it in this video's description, and if you see anything there you like, you can use my discount code at checkout, The Comic book report to save two dollars off of your order please note if you use my affiliate link or code to make a purchase i will earn a small commission but it's a fantastic way to support the channel thank you so much for considering now let's get started with today's omnibus review first some quick facts about today's collection the issues in this volume were written primarily by gail simone and illustrated primarily by nicola scott Dale Eaglesham, Brad Walker, and more. The comics in this omnibus were first published by DC Comics beginning in 2005. The volume itself collects Villains United issues 1 through 6, Villains United Infinite Crisis Special issue 1, Birds of Prey issues 104 through 109, Secret 6 volume 2 issues 1 through 6, Secret 6 volume 3 issues 1 through 16, and Stories from 52 issue 28 and Countdown issue 22. And finally, this is an oversized hardcover edition with glossy print paper stock a glued binding and a total of 928 pages. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and issue a general spoiler warning. I will be flipping through the contents of today's collection and commenting on plot points throughout. You've been advised. Okay, and here's our first look at that omnibus, and right from the jump, I have to say, this is my contender for most beautiful looking omnibus of the year. I think this dust jacket is just extraordinarily well designed. The front cover has one of the rosters for the Secret Six included in this volume. I would say this is the main lineup for the bulk of the book so far. Anyway, really, really love it. I just think it's gorgeous to look at. Love the stylization of the Secret Six font. Everything is just really going good here. The spot though is where this thing really shines for me. We have more of the six here along with some text, but this is the most standout omnibus spine I've seen in recent memory. I just love it. I'm so fascinated by it. It's something that absolutely sold me on this book as well when I found out what it was going to look like, and having it in person, it does not disappoint. The back of the dust jacket as well, keeping that kind of rectangular blocky theme, showing us more images of the six, blurbs about the book, pricing information, things like that. Altogether, like I said, an outstanding looking book. Love this dust jacket. I really could not be happier with it. I just think it's really, really well designed, and I'm floored with how much just care DC put into this. Really beautiful stuff. Okay, now I want to spend one more minute looking at that dust jacket, also showing the under the dust jacket hardback book itself. As I get the dust jacket off though, I'll show you some interior flaps here, which are on a nice pink. I'll go ahead and spread out the entire dust jacket as well, so you can see everything at a glance. Like I said, this dust jacket to me is just super striking. I really love everything about it, but that spine in particular, I just think is gorgeous. Uh, I feel like I'm already being a bit redundant, but really it is just jaw-dropping to me. I 
really, really like the creativity that DC showed here, and I have no complaints. The hardback book itself has some nice art prints. We have, again, more boxy kind of looks here, seeing all of these different members of the Secret Six. And I will say one thing to note, it's against kind of a field of black, which I like. It kind of juxtaposed with the white of the spine of the dust jacket or the cream or whatever color that is. But as you can probably tell, the front of the book and the back of the book are the same image. I would have loved to see maybe a little bit more creativity here. I was surprised to see this, uh, but overall, I do think it's a nice design, and I do like that we get some art on book. And now that we're done with the exteriors, I wanted to spend a moment looking at the binding for this omnibus. Now, mine is a glued binding. We do have a little bit of an eye, which is nice, but I will say there is a bit of gutter loss. There was a couple times as I was flipping through that I had to push the pages down a little bit to make sure I could read the dialogue or see some images that were in the gutter. It's nothing too severe, nothing I don't expect reading these glued binding books, uh, but just something to note for collectors out there. Okay, and now let's go ahead and dive into the book proper. We have some beautiful end pages with some of the Secret Six there. Then we have some great title pages, publication information, things like that. I'm happy to report this omnibus is paged and has an incredible table of contents. Yay! I love seeing a modern comic book run and omnibus that still has a table of contents. It makes flipping through this book a breeze, and I just, as a collector, I love to see it. After that, we have an introduction by the great Gail Simone, the writer of just about all of this omnibus. We have one or two issues that are written by uh, other writers, uh, but this is really Gail Simone's uh, written work here, and I love that we have a bit of an introduction, especially to commemorate this awesome collection. And after that, we jump right into Villains United. Now, this is the Infinite Crisis uh, kind of mini-series that ties into that big event. I mentioned it a little bit at the front, but this is my introduction to these characters. I just had an opportunity to read this six-part mini-series, plus the special in the pages of the Infinite Crisis Omnibus, also from DC. I reviewed that book, I think sometime in the last year or two. Love that book, love that event. But this miniseries was really a standout for me. I didn't know a good handful of these characters. I was not aware of this team whatsoever. But after reading that Omnibus and reading this miniseries, I was really hooked. It's such an eclectic group of characters. In many ways, it's reminiscent to me of something like the Suicide Squad or with Marvel, something like the Thunderbolts, where you have kind of this rogue team of arguable villains or anti-heroes that kind of come together for whatever reason, maybe for the greater good, maybe not, but it's a team coming together to get stuff done. And that's really what we have here in the pages of The Secret Six. With Villains United, it's basically these characters trying to stop Lex Luthor and his league of villains. And so The Secret Six is kind of comprised of all of these sort of cast off, uh, you know, like D-list uh, DC villains. Uh, we have the team with Catman, uh, Cheshire, uh, Deadshot, who is maybe the most prolific character on this list. We have a Ragdoll. Yes, there are many in the DC Universe. This is one of them. I think this is Ragdoll 3, maybe? One of the sons of Ragdoll. Anyway, there's a couple other characters here uh, rounding out the squad. Uh, Scandal Savage, the daughter of Vandal Savage. I think that's a really fun addition here. Uh, but anyway, this team, like I said, is a bit ragtag. It's really like this ill-fated group that's super dysfunctional, trying to stop these other villains and kind of Lex Luthor. There's a lot of cool conspiracy and twists and turns in this miniseries that I will try not to spoil too much. Suffice it to say, if you like the DC kind of cavalcade of villains in that roster, whether they're on the Secret Six or the Secret Six are fighting them, you know, some of the A-listers like Lex Luthor, like I mentioned earlier, this is really a great miniseries and a fun primer for these characters. I don't think you need to read anything else uh, before picking up this omnibus to enjoy the Secret Six. You could really start right here. Yes, some of these characters pre-exist in the DC Universe, but I think Simone and team do a great job of catching you up on details you need. Uh, but yeah, this is what kicks off this omnibus. We have that Infinite Crisis uh, based miniseries along with the special, and it's really, like I said, a great way to kick off this book. I will say from here, we transition in this omnibus to the Birds of Prey issues. I've heard from other YouTubers like Near Mint Condition, uh, Omar over there mentioned that there might be a mapping issue in this omnibus. Uh, he kind of made the point that he thinks the volume two of Secret Six, which is that six issues, should have been here before the Birds of Prey crossover. Uh, I think there's some merit to that. I did go ahead and read this in order as it's presented in this omnibus. So I will say a little bit of 
spoilers as to why that mapping could be a big deal. It ultimately revolves around something that happens at the end of this Birds of Prey chunk, which is issues, I think, 104 through 109. I know I tagged on that earlier. Uh, but it's like four or five, five or six issues of Birds of Prey, another Gale of Simone series. That's kind of the female-led little uh, team of heroes there. They cross over with the Secret Six. They kind of are on different sides of the same mission. Some of the characters clash. Uh, there's even romantic sparks between Catman and Huntress, which I really love to see myself. Uh, but they're in a mission, I think, in Russia or something like that, and they're trying to get this package who might be a fallen friend, mayhap. Uh, but anyway, we have a couple different factions all fighting in the snow. It's really epic. It's awesome. But after the dust settles in that mission, when the Birds of Prey return home, Secret Six kind of do their own thing, one of the members uh, gets essentially assassinated at the very end of that Birds of Prey run. But then we start off after that with the Secret Six Volume 2, those next six issues of the series. And that character is, lo and behold, still here, thriving, doing fine. And then after we finish those six issues, we jump into the Secret Six Volume 3, which is the first 16 issues of that and that character is dead once again. Uh, so that's really the mapping hiccup here. It has to do with a character of the Secret Six who gets killed off. Uh, so I do think reading those six issues of Secret Six Volume 2 before Birds of Prey might be a preferred way to navigate this omnibus, and thankfully you have that table of contents, so finding the issues you need shouldn't be a problem at all. But if you're like me and you read this thing cover to cover, it could be a little bit disjointed or odd, but I did have a bit of a heads up that there was something odd there, uh, but that is really the only wrinkle. I think besides that, you won't really need to know much. Uh, something else I will say, though, jumping from the Villains United to Birds of Prey to Secret Six Volume 2, there are some roster changes, like the Parademon character is no longer there. In Birds of Prey, you have Harley Quinn briefly joining the Secret Six. She's kind of in and out without, you know, really much to do. Um, you know, and then in Volume 2, we have some more characters uh, join up. We have Bane joining the team of the Batman Mythos. Uh, so that's a really fun roster change. But again, from there on out, you can just keep reading this thing and there's no other kind of mapping little hiccup there. And even with that, I still found this to be a perfectly enjoyable read. The art we get throughout this collection, too, it changes hands a couple times, but some of the main players, like we mentioned earlier, are Nicholas Scott, uh, Dale Eaglesham, and Brad Walker. Uh, all of these artists are tremendously talented. I love in the introduction we even have, and actually uh, afterward, we have Gail Simone kind of commenting on the strengths of the different artists involved with this book, and I absolutely agree with her assessment and her kind of sentiments about it all. All extremely gifted, but they all kind of accentuated or brought different things out of certain characters. I honestly don't know which artist was my favorite. I felt them to all be extremely competent and gifted artists, and I never really felt pulled out of this book based on the quality of the art, or even as the art changed. I think everything flowed exceptionally well, and there was a level of kind of visual fidelity that even as we jumped from artist to artist, you never really got pulled out, or at least I didn't. That was not my experience. And I think that that is based on kind of the kinds of artists that they got for this book, but also also the incredible and consistent voice we get from Gail Simone at the helm writing most of this book. Um, as far as the storylines we have in this book, there are a lot of great stories. Uh, we do have a couple of runners that go from one story to the next. We have some developments within these relationships that we see from arc to arc. I would say overall, there's not like one big, massive, epic storyline, at least in this omnibus. Just more of a handful of smaller uh, storylines, but they all really work well together, and I think for the most part, everything dovetails quite nicely into the next story. Um, this team is really who how do i say this like i said they're a rogue team they're not always the do-gooders you know sometimes they're kind of doing bad or maybe they're doing the lesser evil <laughs> sometimes at most they feel more mercenary you know you get the feeling that they're doing this for profit or for their own kind of gains so you you know you feel like you're dealing with more of a mercenary group rather than a superhero faction not that they don't have heroic moments because they certainly do here and there in this book but this is a rogue team so if you're looking for the justice league you might want to keep looking um, 
Um, that being said, we have some great cameos from some of the Justice League members. Uh, Batman makes a couple notable appearances, for example. We even have Wonder Woman in the pages of this book, playing a pretty prominent role in one of the last story arcs in this collection. And we also have a lot of other great DC villains showing up throughout these pages. A couple of the actual storylines that I'll touch on that I really enjoyed, I really liked that Villains United special where we have the team forming and fighting off uh, Lex Luthor and his whole team team. I think that that was really fun with Infinite Crisis, but it also serves really well as the foundational story for this omnibus. And then when we got to the issues of Birds of Prey from Simone, I like that it's the same writer, and it does really feel like Secret Six were kind of the featuring guests of honor throughout those couple issues, but we still would go back to the actual Birds of Prey characters that were driving that main title. So I think that that was a bit jarring for me. I think that the issues were still fun, but I would almost have rather read them in their own omnibus. Hint, hint, DC Comics would love to see a Simone Birds of Prey omnibus sometime down the road. Uh, but what we get here is is really fun and obviously they are heavily featured we have some really important developments that happen in the pages of those birds of prey issues uh, like with the death of one of the secret six members so i'm super elated they were included in this set uh, but it's really once we get to the actual volumes of secret six and volumes two and three here it's there that I really feel like this series took roots. The miniseries was super fun. That longer arc in Birds of Prey was really fun. But once we got to the self-titled works for Secret Six, I really felt like it started to um, have its footing and have something to say. The team had already had a degree of history. We were dealing with some roster changes. And what, the, what we got as readers from this point on really felt like you could settle into the title, at least in my mind. And I really enjoyed that. I like the kind of longer form storytelling. There were even issues or moments in issues where the characters kind of had room to breathe or interact with the other characters off the kind of battlefield. And I think that these were really great and sometimes intimate moments that really expanded on the characters, uh, you know, just characterizations, their dynamics, the relational history that we get to start to build with these characters. And I'll get to a little bit more of that in a moment. Uh, but we have some roster changes, like I mentioned throughout this book. Harley Quinn comes in and out. Matt Hatter of the Batman universe comes in and out. Uh, but once we get to these Secret Six volumes, we really start to get a more solid team, or at least from what I can tell. And the Six is really Catman, Deadshot, Scandal Savage, we have Ragdoll, we have Bane, and finally Jeanette, who is kind of a banshee. This team is the uh, kind of team we see on the front cover, and this really feels like the core team, at least at this point in the series. You get to really settle in with this cast of characters for, like, you know, a more appreciable amount of time and I really like that I feel like as the team kind of stabilized for me like I said it was easier for me to kind of grow those roots down and really invest more heavily in this team and these characters some of the actual adventure or storylines we get in these main series that I like, we have the team trying to find um, this girl who basically has access to this, uh, I don't know, artifact, essentially a really big MacGuffin that we find out is actually a get out of hell free pass. Uh, and it leads to just this insane kind of uh, bounty hunt war between all the villains in the DC universe and the secret six. We have the team kind of turning on each other. That's a really, really fun arc. We have a truly disturbing villain at the heart of that as well, this kind of masked villain who's revealed in the pages of the book. Uh, but that was really a memorable one. I really like to see what that brought out of the characters. Uh, and there's also a really memorable storyline toward the back of this book I think about as well, where we have the team going to this sort of island that has this giant jail that's supposed to be kind of a jail colony or country. Um, and it's really a corrupt institution. There's kind of like a mine under it. There's slaves. There's all these people imprisoned, and it's really, really dark and disturbing as well. And we have the team essentially being hired to help out the jailers, but they start to defect. We have the Amazons get involved, and there's just a lot of really interesting beats there. Of course, there are more stories than just this, but I will leave that for those wanting to read through it, because there are a lot of fun twists and turns that I want people to really enjoy this one. I will say some of the most lasting impacts this book had on me, though, are the character interactions. 
I really, really loved how Simone got me to care for this team. Even having Bane, who's a Batman villain I don't overly love, he's at this crossroads in his life where ethically he doesn't want to use Venom anymore because he loses control. And we have him portrayed as kind of a recovering drug addict. And he develops this weird kind of paternal relationship with Scandal Savage. And it's really sweet and really, really uh, kind of intimate in its own way. It's really odd, but it just works. We have Deadshot kind of only looking out for number one, but then finding himself trapped up caring about the team. I really just laughed out loud a lot of times at Deadshot. How he interacted with the world and kind of his glib one-liners just really, really made me crack up. Catman was also really fun, grim dark, and just really had his own set of morals and values, but he was kind of, um, he was sort of the moral paragon of this book, I felt in many ways. He was kind of, he had his own code and he was so rigid to it, and I really just liked him as kind of a team lead. Um, I thought that uh, Scandal Savage also had a lot of her own journey uh, between the loss of her loved one, her father issues with Vandal Savage, which was another fun storyline. Um, but really, all of these characters had their moments to shine, and I really appreciated that in this book most of all. If this is the quality of this run, I can't wait to hopefully see a volume two come out down the line, because I adored this. At the back of the book, as you just saw, we have a wealth of extras. We have a lot of great uh, kind of behind-the-scenes artwork, outlines. We have a lot of good written work where we have things from the different creators and artists kind of commenting on the book, kind of a paneling kind of Q&A that's all kind of written down here for us. Really love seeing this. It really helped me invest even more in the world of The Secret Six and all the creators behind it. Really love seeing that. I feel like the extras that were included were so lovingly presented. A really stellar book here. And all that's left now is to give it a grade. For easily one of my favorite team books I've ever had the pleasure of reading in the pages of a comic book, with gorgeous art throughout from so many different creators, the Comic Book Report is happy to give The Secret Six Omnibus by Gail Simone Volume 1 an A-. This was an incredible collection from DC Comics, and I'm so happy they supported this release. Yes, this series is a bit more mature, a little violent, a little risque here and there, but truly some impeccable, character-driven storytelling. Really had a blast with this. Simone is absolutely raising the bar with the quality of a DC comic here. Really loved it. Like I said earlier, cannot wait to hopefully see a volume two somewhere down the line. But let me know what you think of The Secret Six. Have you read this whole run? Did you pick up this omnibus? Would love to hear all those thoughts in the comments below. If you also have other Gail Simone comic book recommendations, I'd love to hear all of that. And thank you so much for watching. Until next time, this has been The Comic Book Report. Please don't forget to leave your like. That that comment and maybe check out another video on your way out. Thanks. Have a good one.